<laughs> okay, we're on. Okay. Hey, it? <laughs> I call the... Are we two? Yeah, are we the... <laughs> there was always one in the box before. Yeah, but we couldn't find it. So, at any rate, it's time to call the September 11th, 2014 uh, regular meeting of the Arundel Planning Board to order. We'll start off with a roll call. James Lauer. Our game. Bob Coon. John McEnroe. Christian Ong. Tom McKinn. Pat Ridley Planner. You all have your agendas, so I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Yeah. Can't say that. Yeah. Okay. Watch you. On the agenda tonight, sorry, I should have told you earlier, uh, we're looking at zoning ordinance amendments, uh, the Gateway District, and then a new format. We're going to review the schedule of, of what's going on. And then we'll have a planner's report. Uh, does the, anybody in the public have a comment on things that are not on the agenda? Excellent. Hearing none, we'll move on to approval of the minutes for August 28, 2014. We had two sets of minutes, I believe. Don't we have the, we have the night watch from that day? Right, the site walk over in. So which one do you do? Uh, we'll do the site walk in first. Any errors, corrections, anything anybody saw? Well, I'll move through and pull the uh, site walk. The site walk. Minutes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? And abstentions? One abstain. No, two abstentions. <coughs> All in favor, two, uh, two abstentions. On to the minutes of the meeting. And you should um, know, since Ann is here to report, we should know the extensions to Kinderman and Coombe. Thank you. Yes. And she wants to film. Yes. Okay, on to the minutes of August 28th. Did anybody see anything in here that needed to be fixed? I move that we approve the minutes from August 28th. Second. All those in favor? One abstention. Bob cool. Moon. I would ask that if anybody in the audience speaks, that you stand up and state your name, because it's being recorded and there's no way for the secretary to know who, who it is without our telling them. Okay. Zoning ordinance. Gateway district. Mr. Planner, please. Yes, sir. Gateway District is a district that uh, was approved by the Comprehensive Plan Committee and recommended and approved by the townspeople uh, on June 11th of this year. Essentially, the Gateway District is a small, is a very small district. Its intention is to be uh, close to the. Uh, uh, it's actually on the Biddeford border, and. Its purpose is uh, best summated in the uh, document that was uh, approved by the town on uh, June 11th, that town meeting. Its designation applies to the northern end of Route 1 quarters and intended as a mixed-use district accompanying residential business and community uses. The Gateway District will permit small to medium-scale retail, office, service, and community uses, as well as single and multifamily dwellings. The residential subdivisions, as defined by state statute, will be excluded. Development standards, the Gateway District will pr permit a small to medium scale wholesale retail office and service uses, as well as community uses and low impact manufacturing. Residential uses, both single and multifamily, that are part of mixed use projects will be permitted, but new single family subdivisions will be excluded. Small lot sizes and limited setbacks shall encourage a limit, maximum use of land, suitable land available for development. So that is essentially the uh, description of the, uh, the district and the intent is basically to create a gateway into the town uh, from Bedford. Essentially the existing CCS district is a gateway from, from uh, 
Kennebuck into uh, into Rundle, and this one is going to be uh, extending um, basically from the Bitterford line. I want to get the map up. Basically, here's the better for the line right here. In this area here. This is Portland Road, Route 1. This is Old Post Road here. This is the Boston Main Railroad. Proctor Road comes down as such. Right now, the whole district is BI district. And uh, it's, it actually has a lot of residential in it. Um, and it has many existing uses. It's a mixed-use district. The intent of this is to create sort of a small character area. Given some of the, uh, the lots here, they're very small, and actually in many cases very, very small. Um, and uh, to create sort of a character area that will be a gateway into the town. It'll provide for a lot of uses, a lot of different uses, with concentrating on essentially um, providing uh, smaller scale uses than, than uh, BI basically encourages, mainly because we have small lots, and also because we have existing built character in this area. We have a built area in which we have a lot of residential, as you all know here, and uh, interspars with some, some businesses. And uh, the irony is that the town line, as we all probably know, really is up at Arundel uh, Motors right up here, Arundel Auto. And most people think the town line really begins on the other side of the overpass. And the reality is the town line is way up here. Um, yes. That's well, a number, of the property, a number of the property owners in here have been asking us if they can do something, what they can do to make their land um, more usable, how they could uh, divide it, uh, what they could do to, uh, to create sort of a, a different character, especially the antique store there. They, they, they've been asking us for years to uh, figure out a way that we can encourage more of their scale kind of development in, in this area, especially since we have some small lots here to work with, and uh, how we can get um, how we can get more um, uh, essentially to try to get uh, get some uh, some character up there in this area so they can actually do a little bit more business. A number of other property owners would like to subdivide their land so they can basically put some some uh, some businesses up there. Right now uh, they feel that they uh, they need to uh, to subdivide that land and have more possibilities. So basically this is a very small area. Uh, it incorporates, incorporates a large parcel of, of uh, basically uh, Proctor Road. Proctor Road comes down here. This is a very large parcel. Unfortunately, most of it's wet. Most of it's wetlands. Uh, it goes all the way down to County Auto here. And that's pretty much the line. And then, then we get into the larger lots, and we have some industrial uses, as we know, down here in Champaign. Um, and we revert back to our uh, business industrial district. Champaign Energy Headquarters, just we identified that. That's in that little pie-shaped area right in in uh, between Old Post Road and Portland Road. Um, a lot of constraints in here. We have a lot of wetlands. We have uh, uh, small lots, lots of wetlands, and existing uh, homes in there. And the object was to try to uh, come up with a district that we could encourage some smaller scale business than the large BI district uh, provides, allow some more subdivision in there so there would be more possibilities for smaller businesses and um, to uh, encourage some residential, because right now in the BI district, as you all know, there is no residential permit in the BI district. So this would allow, we have residential, we have a residential pattern in here, you know, there's no reason to uh, make all the residents in there continue to be non-conforming uses. So uh, what we're going to be doing is, is allowing them to, to be conforming residential uses and allow continuation of that if necessary. Otherwise, uh, we'll be uh, um, encouraging uh, business. 
Uh, you'll notice also that the comp plan committee uh, continued the same thing. They've been continuing with all these mixed use business districts, and that was although residences are uh, still permitted, um, subdivisions uh, would not be. So, and essentially, taking the land that's zoned business could not be uh, used for subdivision purposes, put in a large residential subdivision. But then again, in this district, that's not going to happen because there's really not a lot of land to do that. <clears throat> Uh, so that's essentially uh, the uh, overview of the district um, as presented by the Comp Plan Committee. And this is the boundaries that we're proposing right now. Yes, sir. A couple oh. questions. One, is that Gateway District, where does the water pressure stop? Does it stop at the pumping station? Yeah. So it's rather than actually farther down at the pumping station, there is no water pressure. There's well, that. so I mean, if you're trying to make it down here, down no, here. no, where is your pumping station? Which pumping station? You mean Benefit pumping station? Why is it Arundel? Yeah, it's it's on the on the other side of the bridge. Just on the other side of the bridge. It's on no, it's on this side of the bridge. Oh, it's just across from Champagne. Oh, okay. Well, okay. It's farther down. Next here's question. Here's right. Champagne's right here. This is the end of the, the bridge right here. Yep, and it's that. Uh, this land is actually the under the bridge. The next question is, yeah. is Arundel actually going to move the sign to show that the gateway district's in Arundel? Or are you still going to stay in Bedford? Because turn out the sign is in Limbo. If you want to turn out and call it Arundel. I think the move would be to put the sign where the boundary is. There is a, a top, town of line there. There was at one time years ago something there, but in the great wisdom of designing everything, they didn't want to turn out include a rondo on that side of the bridge. Well, I can't speak to that. When it that's that's to, what we have presently. Yeah, I can speak to the fact that we do have our borders up here, as you well know, and the signs right, right in the pop-up down in here. Right, uh, about there. Where? About there. Can't see it. The markers aren't blue or anything. Okay. Obviously, right in here. Well, it's right just there where the pumping station is. Yep. Yep. Right after the car, the car quality lot in turn where the big empty lot is right there, next to uh, the car dealership there, Country Kitchen, a uh, Country Auto. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I think the, the objective would be to create um, a real entry at, you know, as you come into a rumble. That's the objective. What can we do about that? Yeah, there's grant monies we could probably will go for to, uh, to essentially help uh, move that sign and to create uh, a little bit more of a beautification around that sign because that's when those grants do come, come available and they come from, available from the state, uh, the town would most likely do that, but the town's got to have a policy to do that, and the town's got to make a decision to do that, and and uh, uh, the Gateway District uh, right now is is uh, is a district that will benefit from those kinds of, of improvements that you can get by state grants. So I would imagine, Marty, I won't speak for the selectmen, but I would imagine if we can get those grants and we can get this district going, they probably want to move the sign to the board. Probably if I may, Mr. Chair, yes, I would I would strongly make that recommendation to the board of selectmen. I'm pretty sure Public Works can do it at a very limited cost to us. So I think it'd be a great idea if that's going. You know, we want to identify where our borders are. It'd be a great idea to the sign a little closer to the border. Also, we don't want to advocate a whole section of our business district to, uh, to Benford, which exactly. is what we're doing right now. Absolutely. Everybody assumes that's all Benford. <coughs> Is this following uh, lot lines? Yep. The only place it doesn't follow lot lines is across here. That's the only place it doesn't. And down in here. This is all one large lot back in here. Um, that's the only oh, this is not in line. That's the only uh, that's the only uh, area where it does not follow lot lines. Otherwise it follows falls in there entirely. I mean, what was the reason it didn't right there? I mean it's because only, it's a huge parcel. Because this is this goes all the way out like this. Yeah. 
this is all part That's where our wood structures were going to go. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and, you don't, and you don't want to, and first, uh, number one, you don't want to, the, the objective is not to take um, land that is actually more suitable for in, uh, industrial use back there and put it into small business along here. Second of all, this is, this is about the only access we have to rail. We have some serious site constraints down there. We have a lot of wetlands. We have a lot of water just in general. But this is the only real area that we have great access to uh, the Boston and Main Railroad in a location that's zoned for it that we could put a spur if that were to, to occur. Uh, if there was a higher <coughs> risk. Spurs are not as, as, uh, as popular as they used to be, but still, the possibility exists and still we don't want to, to lose that that option of having that spur of great access thing. Yes, I, I have one other question. In the um, comp plans description that was approved by town, did they identify border? Was that? Was there a map? And there was a map. There was a map that was approved. I'm questioning. You said our job was to approve it, but down is already approved. Our job is to is to refine the map if necessary, because the map is a very small scale. But so was there a map like there, there was, was for Townhouse Corner? Yes, Corners. there was. There was a map. Which means like Townhouse Corners, that map has been approved by the, by by the, the town. town. By, by the town. So and this, this, well, this, this boundary is a bar paper. <laughs> You'll find that this actually it follows the same boundaries as shown on that panel. There's nothing. There's no deviation from it. So it doesn't mean that you know if the if the board wanted to make some deviations from that, they can. But well, I, I will state an immediate concern, and that is that large lot in BI is potentially a large business subdivision. And I know that's what the owner would like to do with it eventually, if given an opportunity. So it doesn't make sense to cut that off from access to Route 1. Well, it's not cutting it off. It still how, can go through it. not? They can still go through it. Put a road through it. But if it's not zoned for, I mean, then it would become a VI a connection to BI, is that allowed sure. in Gateway? Sure. Absolutely. Well, it has a written written yet. Well, uh, yes, you, of course you can go back to BI. And I've talked, the owner's called me a couple times on this too. I and mean, he likes the idea of having an option to sure. do something else there, you know, maybe making a few small lots until such time that he can subdivide it, or he can actually get a business park in there until the market is suitable to do this, this gives him a few more options. But um, this would not prevent him from, we're not cutting him off, it's not like we're putting a, a property line there. Of course you can go through that district to get to the BI. Absolutely. Question. Well, Is that BI? Oh, I'm sorry. Got it. Yeah, I mean, you can go through, but if, if, let's see if I remember right, this is where that lot connects, and I think, I think here too, yeah. if I might. So maybe even here. No, that's what I'm sorry, you're right. It's it's this one. One of those. Right here. Right. It's that one right so, here and this one. I mean if you're cutting out chunks of that property, you might be able to go through, but you don't have access to that property to do the rest of the development in that area. It's his property. Yeah. 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 You can do one Not if not if you're in different districts. Sure. You, route one goes through several districts. No, no, no. If, if, we, if we make chunks of the parcel, the chunks of that parcel that above Route 1 into Gateway, and it's a significant piece, I don't know, you know, it may or may not limit access or limit developability, but since that's the one major lot that is accessible for large development, I think we want to be careful how we zone what borders on Route 1. I'm not sure I agree with you. I think you could put a road through there. Well, a, a road going through, back through the, if we the allow area. that. And also, you also check uh, or, or uh, 
disconnect significant pieces of that parcel from the rest of it. So I don't know what the what the um, developability of those areas are compared to the rest of it. But I would not want to take highly developable areas and make those inaccessible for large business development. Yeah, see, I, I don't think we would be. I, you know, granted, we would have to write in the fact that you could put a road in there, but I don't why see would where you, we why would you have to do that. I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm confused again. If he owns it, he can do whatever he wants with that. In there, if he wants to build a building, he can build a building. If he wants to put a road just to connect the V1, he can do that. There's absolutely no prohibition anywhere from doing that in, our, in any district. What if, what, if you, what if you come up with a business park that extends down into here? You can't do that. It would depend on its uses. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would depend. I think it, it, doing that provides some flexibility to have high visibility, potentially higher profit making businesses up front and have, have a more industrial scale business park in the back. I mean, it, just because the zone line is there doesn't mean we're creating a separate lot, lot line or, or property boundary. I mean, he can, if he owns that piece of land, comes out to Route One, he can still get access to it. You know, and, and potentially put a put a use up in the front that's that's different than. I guess the rest my of concern it. is: Are we looking at individual uses? If you're doing a business park development, that whole park is the use not the individual items in that park. Are you following what I'm saying? I don't necessarily agree with that because I think the uses that would, would go in there would have to abide by the zone. That could be, if there was a, a business park that the uh, fund on Route 1, that could be a retail use right there and the rest would be industrial. Well, with my yeah. assumption that a business park, if it's a, if it's a coordinated an actual development, like a subdivision, if you will, a business subdivision, that, that would be the use, not the individual businesses within that park. But if I'm wrong on that, then there's no issue. But, we have, but yeah. that would be available in the BI anyway. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't make any difference if the front of it was, was part of the Gateway District. And where that business park would be would actually be in BI, which is an acceptable use. But I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that part of it might extend just because of land constraints and things like that, because we're very constrained in that area. Part of it might extend initially into the proposed gateway district, and that would prevent it from doing that. The, the restrictions we put on gateway would prevent it from extending into gateway. Let's keep that in mind as we, as we look at this. That's a discussion well, we can yeah, have with Another part of our regulation says lot split by boundaries. If the larger piece is more than 50%, he could use that whole front and actually in that case. Does our new ordinance say that? No. I don't think so. It's, no, it it's, does. Still, it's still, it's, we, we haven't, haven't addressed it. it. We, nobody's taken that out. And it is, it is in the draft of what we had so far. So. Ted, do you know approximately how how deep that that that, that zone is at that location along that side of the road? Offhand, no, no. I think it's about I think it's about 250, 300 feet. It's, it's, I didn't measure. I can't do that. I won't measure it. For you. This is a, you know I can't scale this. Mm -hmm. But. Um, my goodness, it's scaling. Oh, sorry. I mean, no, I mean, uh, it's a very rough idea. It's a scale. The guys are just trying to keep in line with all the others. Will you touch the screen? It's the smart voice. Is it when you touch the screen? Yeah, touch it. Yeah. No, I think it's because this thing has, has a short. Smart 
think no. John, it, this would improve the options for the That's about three hundred feet. Well, I, I would just want to make sure that we don't limit the options. If we improve the options, I have no problem, but I wouldn't want to limit it. It's a major property in that area. Yeah, it is. You know, actually, John, if you, when you're mentioning, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be adverse to changing this line at all because there's a gradient issue here. Right? Yeah, but that doesn't really have access to Route 1. I no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And route 1's, I mean, this is the overpass. Right. And so this lands down below. It actually has better access to the railroad. Right. You know, this, this is, as I said, taken from the, the town plan map. But, I mean, I would be more than happy to see that one go away. It doesn't make no sense. You can't get access to Route 1 from there, so what's the point? This is right. for businesses mm -hmm. along Route 1. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only place we are not following lot lines is for that parcel. Well, because we want to take it up to a county auto. Uh -huh. That's the only reason. Take it across. These are all lot lines. Ted, do you know if the owner of that parcel is, has been active in our rezoning discussions? No, I talked to him. I talked to him about a year ago about this because he was interested when we proposed the gateway district. He was interested in what, what the implications were. With the options, you know, what, what possibilities would happen? Did he seem to have reservations? No, at that time he did. But we certainly need to. I think we're but, but to, he's been engaged in the conversation. We've had those conversations so, in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. <coughs> now, Does he live in the blue area? If I'm thinking of the right person. No, I think, no, he doesn't live there. I have another question on the boundaries uh, on either side of Proctor Road. Is still some yeah, you know, I uh, the property owner's wish? Well, you know, um, <laughs> there's still BI because, you know, I'm not, I'm not real happy, I'm not sure I want to change the zone. Um, there used to now that Well, there is a use here, yeah, there's a use in here right now. There's a use here, uh, non-residential use here. Um, the residences are there also. And there's also residences. Uh, and there's, there's non-residential, there's residential and non-residential uses on that part of, of uh, Proctor Road. We have a garage there, rather extensive garage there. Um, Small. Yeah. Proctor Road is pretty good. But it's, yeah, we have, we have some, uh, we have some, we have this use here, and the question is, I mean, do we want to downgrade this when they really don't have And that, that, that property owner is really actually doing residential, quite frankly, right now. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a multifamily, isn't it? Yeah. Well, no. Right, right on the curve? That's a, that's yeah, a multifamily. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think he wants to do business. <laughs> no, if anything, you want, want to be residential. But then I'm going to have residential, business, residential. You know, to have a check for it. Because this is, this is business, this is business, and then there's residential. Okay. You're trying to have the checkboard up above. The I do have property. the checkboard, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then actually, this property right here, this is, and we have this in here, but this is a huge amount of wetlands. You probably all know this whole wetland area in here. It's, it's very large. But this also has a wetland that goes all the way back to the BI to here. <coughs> Not really. Tough area. It's a very, very tough area. The best places are right in front along Proctor Road. And they would like to be able to subdivide. And some of those properties would like to subdivide because they can't go that far. Thirty years ago, I was on the planning board, and we had this. This is what we did interested in that. And as soon as you said to them, they would ask for storage. We said no. We didn't have storage. They would do well. The job was like that. Because if you provide storage, it's going to be almost impossible to flash coffee in the whole thing. That's a problem. The, that is a problem because, yeah. from what I understand, it if we won't. Let us use no. their facilities. No. I'm not sure. Well, they yeah. let us if, if we we talk to stand them. up to their facilities, which is a long way. No, from what I from what I had heard, they don't have the capacity and would not be interested. To the bridge. In our hooking into their system, 
I'm, I'm just not saying, no, I'm, I, what I'm asking you for is not the entire the I district. What I'm saying is to the bridge. I, I, to that the reason I'm saying that is because of the constraints of turning and trying to put sewer underneath yeah. and the railway and everything else so you don't have to take it under the railway. That's why I'm saying to the bridge. But to that I'm not sure. I just know that, that I was told by somebody who works in the sewer department they're not interested in adding any more capacity to what they have. May I, Mr. Chair? In my conversations with the city of Biddeford, it would be prohibitively expensive for the town of Arundel to service just the north side of the railroad because it has to be a force main place there. And the difficulty, as Marty said, the difficulty, you're not allowed to hang a sewer line from an overpass. So tunneling under the railroad is what made it. So, it, so they could do it according to the city manager, but it would cost so much money for such little land that it really wouldn't necessarily work. Gee, they don't want us to hang it. No, often. for some reason, they don't like yeah, to imagine why. hang it sewer from the But they do it over the water. Yes. Do it over the water. Oh, so it has enough heat in it so it doesn't freeze. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any any other discussions about where the zone? I'd like to hear from you, from the fellow that, that owns that big section in the back, just to get clarity as to how it feel. I would say, Mr. Chairman, if I may, that we probably should follow the same model as we did with Town House Corner in, in the sense that we have we, we notified we have a meeting with all the property owners. Because that did not happen. Um, that has not happened yet. And um, I think it's beneficial that we do that because we will have um, we'll have an opportunity here from neighbors who might mm -hmm. resident existing residents that might have a concern or existing business owners that might have a concern. I mean, so far what I've heard from business property owners in there has been has been positive, but then there are business property owners that may not, that we haven't talked to, but I, a lot of them have come in and talked to me, you know, uh, individually, and they kind of like the idea. Mr. Um, Chair? Yes? You might ask if there's anybody in the audience that is from that is district that we're speaking of here. I could. <laughs> I could, but right now we were just discussing the fact that we want to contact the people well, that are in the area. It. They, if you're contacting them, there might be somebody here we can contact already. But to, to the planner's point, we made the mistake in TCD of not contacting people ahead of, ahead of time to make sure that they were amenable to the idea. I think his, his suggestion is that we contact everybody in advance now instead of putting together all of the work. Let's find out what, what people are like. And, and if there's anybody in, this, in the audience that does live in the area, I would be interested in hearing what they have to say. Anybody lived on that way? Apparently yeah. not. I didn't know. Yeah, I know. I agree. I. Oh, and they worked out in that area. <laughs> I don't live there. I don't work there. Donator Kenderman, Copperhead's Plan Committee. Um, I do have a suggestion, however. Again, in light of what has happened in previous discussions. In addition to inviting the landowners that are actually in the district, also the immediate abutters, because they are impacted just as well as the landowners in the district. And I think that would be an excellent idea. And you said right now it's all in the VI? Yeah, it's all VI. All the land that's shown in blue is all VI right now. Uh, the only, yeah, it's all that. Yeah. Uh, and you remember this parcel is the parcel that we changed into all mm -hmm. That was the one that was split in half and it was changed to all beyond. So. so we're looking at about 20 lots down in that area. Yeah. And then maybe another sure. 10 people running against it. Yeah. yeah. I go, I'd go a couple of, uh, a couple of lots deep, lots deep yeah. because I think, no, it doesn't hurt. It hurts, uh, the only thing that hurts is, is the postage budget. That's about it. Uh, it's smart to do it. Uh, and I, you know, if you recall, 
it really did help us a lot when we were dealing with the, with the, we were struggling with the, the uh, TB2 district and, you know, whether or not people really cared about residential subdivisions there and it wasn't until, frankly, the complaint committee said you should really talk to these people before we finish, finalize our, our recommendations and uh, we found out that our assumptions might work quite as accurate as we thought. It was a good good discussion. We learned a lot from folks, so they learned a lot from us, and we came to a, to a good compromise. So I would recommend we do the same thing for this, mm -hmm. that we in fact have have a, a, a workshop with, with the uh, with the neighbor. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I request when we turn around and have discussions or anything else, since we're playing colors there, along the way. And we also have a color there for the distinction of where water is for hydrants or anything else. Of course, we know for distance. Because we played that question mark before. And for the future, to show when we're speaking of districts, of turn on heaven the mark on Route 1. Just by putting a little red dot or something other. <coughs> Instead of playing the guessing game, possibly how far something from one spot to another. Are you saying that you would like to have, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. are you saying you want where the hydrant locations are or where the water line location is? Hydrant. That's going to have to be field verified because I don't have a map that shows that. Although, you know, we on Long Route 1, we, uh, you know where they are. We know where the property lines are, basically. Uh, what I'm saying is I don't have a map resource for that. I'm going to have to feel very far. That's not a problem. I'll do that. Uh, they'll probably be proximate. Yeah. There's one at the pumping station. That I think it. there's one at, at uh, County Auto. No, I don't um, think so. That's why I'm sure we're going to try. Okay, but they get I know, I know there's one at the bumping station because there's no far away middle. Okay. Uh, I will feel very fun. Where are those going? Yeah. The next type of So we can uh, just, yes, yes, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Do you guys want to look at the uh, conditions and the design standards tonight? Well, you know what? I, I'm, may I go for it? Yeah, okay. Thanks. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm thinking just like um, the site uh, or the actual boundaries. It's like you worth meeting with the, the, uh, the resident, the property owners, before getting too deep into this. Mm -hmm. Could that fire says, I could. That's just my opinion. Well, okay. I was going to take something similar. Okay. I just ask, it's, it's on our agenda. But I do tend to agree. I think it would be good um, to sit with the, with the property owners and find out, first off, what they think of it. It is, it is something that we're going to have to look at because the comp plan has said they want to have this district done there. Well, the town here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was saying it was a mutual one. I guess we're all at this Oh, come on. <laughs> that much. Let's just throw the comp plan under the bus. Can we get Mr. Chair for the data again? All right. What do we think? Maybe a month from now? Give you enough time to notify everybody? Yeah, I mean, I, it's not that many people. Uh, it depends how much lead time you want. Two weeks, three weeks. I was thinking a month. What do you guys think? More than two weeks. More than two weeks. More than two yeah, weeks. A <coughs> month. Before you get people, uh, if anybody is uh, southern bird, before they start flying, because then guess what? Well, that's why I'm a little concerned about a month. But most people wait until Thanksgiving and yeah, still. Uh, oh yeah. 
he said, if you're going to play in September, at least get it, let's get it in the, in the, uh, let's have the ruffle and get it started, because otherwise, you're in October, then everybody's gone, if, if there's any snowbirds or anything else. I think the first meeting of October, that'll be well before the full season. October 9th. Yeah. But you're already changed now. No, but we, we can't do it any earlier. I don't think it would make sense to do it in two weeks. We think we need more. Yeah, so I think about October 9th. About 10 days. And that's just under a month. Just under a month. Yeah. I think October 9th would be a good day to put it on the agenda. And we can work work around that. At least it will give us a chance. Yes, some of the owners may have may be snowbirds and head south, but there'll there'll be some of the owners that are gonna be here. But if they have ample notice too, they can they can, they can yeah. go in and meet with Tad, get the gist of what's going on and or provide any point. comments or, or issue a formal letter of comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I think in the Communication to landowners it would be important to give them some kind of framework as to what we're talking about. Because if you just say we're talking about Gateway District, most people are not going to have any clue what we're talking about as far as, as performance standards and all of these things that we do, all of those details. So if we say, you know, what would you like to see there, they're not going to have any clue. We have to provide some kind of framework <coughs> of discussion so that people know what to expect and what kind of input we're looking for. That could prove to be problematic unless we're, we're willing to sit down right now and work our way through all of the, the detail of what that area would look like <coughs> so that we could then present it. I think if we give them what the comp plan said the gateway district should look like, that that will give us a starting point, and it gives us the same starting point. It gives a, it gives everybody a, a chance to sit down and say, this is what the comp plan has said. Let's see if we can't work together with the people in the district to come up with something, as opposed to our coming up with something and then say, this is what we're looking at. Well, I would respectfully disagree. I, I if you recall, with townhouse corners, we didn't really get public input and good discussion until we propose something. Now we may have to change things, but we didn't get any kind of real interaction until we put something down and said, this is what we're thinking about. What do you think? But we also have a lot of people quite upset with us because they had no idea that this was about to happen because they, they hadn't received any correspondence from the town about the fact that we were going to be making those adjustments all of a sudden they got a letter that said, here, this is what we're looking at doing, and it was an after-the-fact letter. Mm -hmm. I'd rather tell them up front, this is what we are looking at, this is what we are thinking about, and then they can come in and they can say, yeah, I like the idea, no, I don't like the idea, I, I don't think we should have, uh, uh, and I, I, I don't know what's in this, I don't think we should have boarding houses in this district. Uh, at least it would give us an idea as to what people were looking at. I, I don't just agree with John, but I think it's also a risk of, of sending a list of what we, we think we might like and, and they're not knowing the difference between just just a rough draft and actually approved set in stone regulations. And I think we've seen that as much happen that people might be upset that 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 they think and they they've already have already voted and approved or something. I'd rather keep it more <coughs> the general description. I think we need to have a clean slate so that we're not um, presenting something that, that might be taken the wrong way. Uh, okay. Dan, you first. My name is Dan Dubois. My suggestion would be to just take an extra out of the, the, the uh, um, comprehensive plan. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. just take that and what, you know, what the description of the and district the is. Put that into the letter, and that gives them a synopsis of everything that you're going to do there. You know, it talks about standards, it talks about small businesses, the idea of mixed use, and put that in the letter. I think that's more than what we've done in the past, and it doesn't give them the whole ordinance. Well, Kinder, and again, 
I agree with them, but I'd go a step further for the next phase. The letter should be, I would suggest, very generic. And the comp plan description is certainly that. However, when you have the folks in for a meeting, don't give them a blank slate. Um, give, give them some, a list of proposals. Yes. And, and then basically say, OK, what do you like, what do you not like? And, and then frame your ultimate draft from that. Uh, if you go into a meeting with a bunch of people and nothing, generally what you come out of the meeting with is a bunch of people and nothing. Uh, so having having something on paper that they can critique and react to, mm -hmm. and, and if the reaction is very favorable, you know you're on the right track, and if not, then you know you have to go back to square one. I agree with that. It, um, it, I, didn't, I didn't intend to say that we shouldn't have uh, anything go by, but but the letter should be just as clean and simple as possible. Right, don't that's, start fires before you Yeah, that's, that's what could happen. And, yeah. and we're not, I, don't, I think we're, we're not trying to stop fires at the time. We'd rather, and then when they come in, they say, just like you said, here's some ideas of what we think would work. But send it out <laughs> with a letter. That is what I meant by framework. Okay, oh, yeah. it doesn't have so it's not like we're all saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. so, we either go through it today, or we go through it next week. You get that frame. I'm just yes. setting up so that we can be done. That month's going to be here. Don't we, we have a rough framework right. already, though? Yeah, we have a rough framework. Yeah. Should we get any more specific than that? No. No. no we have That's where you cause problems, right? That's what I'm afraid of doing here. Right. We but have we, enough of them already. We, we can yeah. sit down uh, in four weeks with that rough framework and say this is what we're looking at and these are the ideas that we have and we can get feedback on it. And, and it would be better to do that uh, because at that point we can go through and if there's stuff that people are just adamantly opposed to, we can pull it out and we can make all the necessary corrections without spending a year working up all of the details. We still got three phases down there. <laughs> Do they have lights? No, we don't have lights anywhere now. Okay. So, Mr. Clancy, now we have. I didn't start it. He didn't. That was my fault. Okay. The next item. Didn't start it. So, the new format and review the schedule. This is it. Personally, I think we need to have a discussion about the entire ordinance because I, I don't know uh, if the Board of Selectmen will send that through as one ordinance. The way we're developing it, it is one big ordinance. And I don't know, and, and I, I can't ask Dan to look in his crystal ball. Why not? We have to all the time. To, to, to determine what the Board of Selectmen would do. But I'm terrified that if we send this through, we've, we've got a couple of people in the Townhouse Corner District that aren't going to like it. We're going to have a couple of people in the DB1 that aren't going to like it. A couple of people. And it's only going to take three or four people in each one of these districts. And the whole thing will get shot down. Part of me looks at it and says, okay, that's not a bad thing. We've gone through, we've put together what we think is a good ordinance. And if it gets shot down at, town, at the town meeting, then we know and we can start all over again. But part of me says, do we want to do that or do we want to come up with uh, all of these districts? We have the townhouse corner district, we have the DB1, we have DB2, we could work up Gateway, and we could work up a framework that we could hang those on and give them out as separate items to the Board of Selectmen to, to pass on. Are they going to put them out separately? I have no idea. <laughs> that's, the, that's what scares If they're going to put them out separately, then, then I don't have a problem. You I'm really, afraid that. But you can't because they're interrelated. So yes, you still can put them out separately. Independent. If they were completely independent of each other, that would be great. But they aren't. Well, well I think we could put together a framework that we could then take Townhouse Corner District and stick it in there and have the framework. With, with Townhouse Corner completely independent. If Townhouse Corner failed, everything else would still survive. Well, let's put it this way. 
The way you got business is in this town. I'll skip and jump all over the place. You better turn around and have separate. Because the fact is, if you put it in one package, it will snowball and it won't pass. In hindsight, I think a better approach, and I don't know if it's too late to do this, would have been to reformat the existing one without changes, put it into, into, the, into each zone separately. Then, once that's done, then we could have approved uh, or worked on worked one at a time. But um, I don't know if it's too late. I, I, I don't think it is. I think we'll, we'll, be, we'll be going several years at, at, with this track. I, I don't think it's too late to do that. Huh? It just scares me that, that, especially after what we saw take place in the townhouse corner district, it's not going to take a great deal of effort at the town meeting to derail the entire ordinance as a whole, that, as a whole package. package, and that's that's what scares me about it. But how can we separate? Like just, what John said it, it is all interrelated. So it, it would be conflict if one piece passed and the other didn't. Well, it's just like your street. Is it? None. Yes, Mr. Well, I've given this a lot of thought, and, and as we have discussed, we can work on the frame. Because the thing that relates to the sections is those sections of the frame that conflict. But we could get the framework in place and in such a state, we could slide in sections like modules. Sort of like blades in a server. So what we want to do is build the server and then put in the blades. And that might be a way, a better way to do it. Which would mean we would shift focus. And that's not to say we don't continue working on, on districts. Um, we're always we're, we got the BI and the and the and, and the gateway, and we're done with the, the business districts and the comp planning committee still working on the residential. So that get, might give us some breathing air, breathing time there to shift over, work on the performance standards, um, and the the, uh, uh, the other language of performance standards, the processes, all those things that are going to be in support of the districts. And get those all squared away, and then we and then what we would do. For safety's sake, because we change our existing, let's say, CCS district, if we had to change that and put it into this form, into this format that we have right now, and then uh, that would be in there. And we could pull that out and put in the DB1 and the DB2. But, so, in effect, <clears throat> what you're saying, it, it makes logical sense, but I'm not sure that it makes logistical sense because you would have to rewrite the existing ordinance to fit within that framework while we're working on the new pieces that we're going to substitute for the existing pieces. And I think that's pretty complex. It's it's a lot of work and it's hard to do. And that would also have to be passed. Yeah. That would have to be passed. The complement would have to be passed, then the framework would have to be passed, then the section would have to be passed. Well, but the, the frame, but no, there'll be additions to the complaint because there, there will be additions on residential. residential yeah. But the framework would have to fit the existing ordinance, or the existing ordinance would have to be rewritten and passed, I think. Yeah. To fit the framework. <laughs> what, what I don't understand, I guess, in this, you know, sometimes we'll make this a little more complicated than it needs to be, like. John wants to get down to a 10 page ordinance, and I agree, still, and still. I, and I agree with him. Um, I do however, moving, moving, on, moving on with what we're doing, we keep saying that these things are interrelated. They're interrelated by some very specific things, like you said, the performance standards. We should be able to take our current ordinance, put in any one of these. We, we, in our ordinance, we even have page left blank intentionally. I mean, but we could create a new section that has district specific regulations and go through and just insert it with the, with the caveat that for uh, the gateway district, in addition, you have to take the performance standards out of section 7.86 or whatever. 
right? and just put it in there. The town would vote on it separately, it would be in the ordinance, and it would just be a few more lines that we got to put in each in each of the ones we've done. The interrelationship between these, I think, would be minimal once we started that process. So, you, so you'd lose none of the work that you've done. You'd have a new section that would have multiple things in it. And then, when we have that time, after we know what's going to be there, then we can go through and really spread out that, the whole regulation and have it there. And you get back to where I think we started that to try to streamline this thing. What happens is with each one of these, we keep on having to rewrite all of the same stuff. And when we, and if we compare from district to district to district, the only difference is there's five feet in this frontage and there's ten feet in that one. Well, let's make them all eight, you know, and have one district. I, it's crazy. I mean, we've done an awful lot of work, and I'd hate to start another whole process of redoing a whole regulation that has to be approved just like the other. We've got, there's a lot of good work, on that, and that would go through to the, to not only the districts, but the specifics. Um, I don't know if we put in the contractor storage yards, for example, some of that other work. All of that we can, we, you could put in, do them all individual if they pass you. They don't, doesn't hurt anything else. Just add a section to your regulation. That's pretty much what I was thinking. Uh, yes. May I, Mr. Chair, I'm not a resident, Todd Absolutely. Shea. Uh, town lineman. Um, Tom, I think that's a wonderful idea. I, I, we've been banging our heads over this over and over again. Ted, if we could, the, either way you do it, there's a lot of work, but if we could take the current ordinance and duplicate the language into every single section without making any changes to the intent or to the language of the ordinance, so we're just duplicating everything that's in there, that's how we have, that's how we have to go about making it so you can repeal and replace sections. And that was the impetus for my saying, wow, you guys have done a lot of incredible work. How do you repeal and replace these sections if you vote on them individually? So you need to re restructure our current ordinance, which would be just cross-referencing everything that refers to each section, inserting it into that section's ordinance, so that you have something to compare apples to apples, so the new framework is there, and if they shoot one of them down, it still fits into that framework, you go back and you start over on that section. Is that possible? Um, the way our current ordinance is written. Yeah, I, well, well, what I've already been doing is, the, the problem with the ordinance, the reason why you can't mix and match, is because the performance standard sections reference the various districts. And that's why if you take this one out, it doesn't cross-reference to this, and that doesn't cross-reference there. If you take all the specific standards of the districts out of all the performance standards, the general performance standards, and then the, the, the performance standards that are specific to the district are in the district regs, then you can easily slide in and out. Now, does that mean that you're going to have to write a, a CCS, just like you did with the with the DD one and two? Yep, you are. Yeah. And that's why there won't be a townhouse corner section. That'll be in R3 or R2 or RR, whatever the comp plan committee comes up with. And so temporarily, you're going to have a 400 page ordinance. Well, I don't but think it's going to be. No, that no, is going to get us to the next phase. I don't think it has to be. I, don't, I think it's going to be less. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be less. Probably probably the one. original objective was to make it easier for the crop owners to set up looking through all these different sections, <clears throat> and, and, and if nothing else, we can do that, we've, we've, we've served the, the uh, demand and the need. So, um, and also, there's nothing controversial about that. We're not right. really changing right. regulations. We're just, we're, just, we, we're just remembering the pages again, more than anything else, just reformatting. Well, you do have some performance standards you want to come in, guys. Right, yeah. 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 I'd say keep it at a minimal, minimal 
So in, in doing that, really would allow to be, you know, that would be the very first article, and, and it would be, I don't mean, know, it should be the first article, but it would be one article that says, hey, look, we've taken today's ordinance, and we've written today's ordinance, nothing has changed, but we've written today's ordinance so that we can start plugging in all these modules. So that should be an easy sell. And then if you had time, and you've already got some of these modules put in, then you could go in and vote on those. You know, I mean, it, would, it would be my preference to separate these and make them a bunch of different warrant But, if I may, at the same time, if you're not changing the intent, you're just changing the format, you don't need a vote because you haven't changed, you're only changing the way it's laid out. You're not changing anything in the context of the ordinance. And if you're doing it that way, then you don't need to vote. This is presented to you. This is our current ordinance, and it's been reformatted. We haven't changed any definitions. We haven't changed nothing at this point. But this is how the ordinance is going to be laid out now. You don't need to vote on that. Because there's, you haven't made any changes other than the minimus changes are your page numbers, your headings. If the, if the intent and the will of that ordinance has not changed, you've taken all the words out of this one and changed it to this one, you haven't done anything differently. I can check with the attorney to verify that, but I'm almost 100% certain. If you're not changing the context of your ordinance, you're just changing the way it's laid out, you don't need to vote on that. Right, there's no substance in, substantive change whatsoever. And that would be good because then we would be able to yeah. hang things on there and say, okay, we would be able to take DB1 and hang it on there so that it would fit in. We'd be able to do the same with any of the other districts that we were working on. Don't agree. Sometimes when something is complex, it, it, I find it helps to look at what's the final product going to look like before you worry about how am I going to get there. And, and having sat in the audience and watched you guys work for years, the major problem I see is that the, the land use ordinance is, is cumbersome and confusing because you're, you're going from you know here to there and then somebody else finds another section that applies and, and you, you end up chasing yourselves around the ordinance. In working on the comp plan committee this time around, I've given this piece a lot of thought and what I envision is a land use ordinance almost being set up in terms of chapters. So if, if as an applicant and a you know, property owner, I come in and I say, okay, I, I, I have some land in DB1 and I want to do something there. If the planning, if the <coughs> planner would hand me a little booklet that says DB1, everything you wanted to know and more, and that's all I need to look at. So that all of the standard, the performance standards and the rules and regulations for DB1 are right there. And I don't need to look at, I don't need to look at shoreland zoning I just need to look at that. And the same thing would be true for the residential districts. I just bought a piece of property in R1. What can I do? What can't I do? Here's R1. And then those things which are not applicable to any district in particular, but dis uh, the town in general, you know, shoreland zoning, that overlies a lot of things. That's a whole separate section. But if the place that I'm concerned about doesn't involve the shoreland zoning rules, I don't need to know that even exists. And that would make your job a lot easier because when the applicant comes in and they have questions about this or you have questions of them, you're all looking at just a few pieces of paper. So in effect, you get to the uh, proverbial 10-page ordinance for each applicant even though your whole ordinance is bigger. That was the original intent of this revision when we started how many years ago? It still is, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. The that's intent is when someone are. came in, he would pull a section out okay. and it up. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah, you're building a road, you'll need this section. Mm -hmm. All right. And, you know, yeah, you do need general performance standards. So take the general performance standards, because you're not going to repeat them in every section. Because then the ordinance is going to be 400 pages long. So here are the general standards, and here's the R1. Oh, you want to build a road? Okay, here's the road construction. So that's it. That's what the whole intent has always been. You know, so we don't have to make huge copies for people, thank goodness for internet. But it's so much easier for them because if you've seen it, this board has seen it many times where somebody comes in with a proposal, we think we're all set, and somebody remembers, oh, what about section 6.2.3.8.5? Bob's famous for finding the landmines. You know, and said, oh, 
we forgot about this. And then suddenly the, the applicant has to go back and redo things because they're in the old booby traps. That's been the whole intent is to get rid of the booby traps. They come across as batches from the crowd. Oh, yeah. It, it looks really That's bad. That's not fair. It looks bad. So, um, we've identified most of them now so they, they don't they don't occur like they used to occur. But um, that's what Donna's saying is what this board has been working towards. It doesn't look it, but we've been slowly creeping our way towards that. It's the framework that you know, to plug these modules in that we need to do. I'm a little terrified of taking the whole ordinance and making it the the, uh, the way it is now, but that can be done. It's just a huge amount of work to do that and then do this simultaneously. So, so then we get a system, right? So if you talk, talk to Southern Maine Planning and Development Council, no, really, I mean, we pay dues to that and say, listen, this is a project we need to do, and we need done, and we need no changes to be made, but we need it to fit into a repeal and replace ordinance style, and get a price from that. It would be worth it, rather than having staff such as yourself, who's got other things to do, now start dissecting our current ordinance in order to make it fit. That's the piece I missed, and Tom, I'm, I'm really glad you said that because I've been trying to, I've been banging my head against the wall. I know a complete repeal and replace in Arundel more than likely isn't going to happen. But if we can do it that way and have somebody dissect that one, I don't know if there's interns or there's students working on master's degrees right now, but we, we can find a way to, to have that. I will check with the attorney first thing tomorrow morning. I'll, I'll email the entirety of the plan with a letter know I believe that we can do that as long as we're not changing the context or we're not changing any of the meaning of that ordinance. We're just changing the way it's written so that we can get it to the voters to make a decision. And I, I will go to the Board of Selectmen and ask them to authorize me to find someone who can help us do that. That would, that would, uh, that's the way when we plug, we pull blades in and out. Okay. Yeah, so so I, I think from a board point of view, I think we need to authorize that. Here's the chair. But, <laughs> yeah, but I want to make sure that everybody is, we're all on the same page. Yeah. I think that would be a do great thing. A motion? Mm -hmm. I don't know, do we need a motion? No. no I don't think we need a motion. I think it's just, it's the consensus of the board. That, that that would proceed forward. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Marty? I didn't say no. Okay. That's, that's a good sign. <laughs> okay, good. The other thing that we're probably going to have to look at is if we want to get this ready in time for the <coughs> June meeting, that means that we have to have it ready for a public hearing no later than the beginning of March. Because if we have to make any changes, we need some time. <coughs> and if we're going to do that, then we're going to have to meet almost every week. Question. To hang to call classification or framework before anything is done, do we not have a special meeting coming up in November? So the town. I can't make it in town. We never meet in town. No. What I, my question was to classify for discussion of Framework. You mean to get out ahead and, and let people be aware there of what's going no, on? And so that we turn out, if we put it out to it, so we it's there already, the word framework, how we're setting it up, is approved. That's what I was just saying. To, just, just to turn around to, like you said, do the chair. I will verify tomorrow once again, but I don't believe we, none of the residents need to vote on the framework. Okay. So I, I will verify that tomorrow, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to scorn anyone by saying that, but the town shouldn't care, shouldn't have to weigh in on how it's, it's laid out as long as we're not changing anything. So right. let me verify that with the attorneys. I'll email you as soon as I have a response there, and that sounds like the easiest way to make this complicated thing Vote, able to be voted on. Okay. And that being said, I still think we're going to have to end up meeting. <laughs> we're looking at about looking at six, six months to mark. Yeah. Well, we're looking at about sixteen weeks before we get it ready to bring to to finalize everything and and bring it to uh, a public hearing. 
Yeah, but will, RS, will the RSU let us be here? They may not need to go to public hearing if, 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 uh, if we get, you know, from, from, from we're, the we're lawyer. We're going to have some stuff that we want to hang on there. And, and, and that, I don't that's the issue that you're working on now, yeah. right? That should continue on. Yes. With the what framework of the ordinance, that doesn't have to be the public hearing. Yeah. yeah, okay, you're right. Well, at the same time, I find someone to dissect that ordinance and put it into the framework that we're going to work on. And possibly even propose a framework for us okay. that would work. Yeah. <laughs> you have a framework you want yeah, to use? Yeah, I've got a framework. Right. It's already set up. That's what we'll do. Is I mean, that's what we've been working on. We, we, get, we have the framework all set. Because we're so plugging in blue pieces of that's it. That's what this is. Yeah. But then it's the that whole thing is it's, it's, this all. Existing current document. Put it in the Put it in the Exactly. Right. Yeah, we've already got that's what, I'm saying is, that's what I'm saying is independent of yeah. the board's yeah. discussion. Yeah. Now, there may be some desires right. of the board that we want to integrate in, and that, that can be done at the normal town meeting when we have, when we're discussing new zones and everything else. You, we've already done some performance things. Right. The point is, we've already done a lot of yeah. performance standards that are in there now. And so you, you all can continue doing your work right. on the new stuff. Right. Yeah. We'll get the rest of it taken care of in the back. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, my only concern is that, that you know, we've got three of the districts done. Mm -hmm. DB1, DB2, Townhouse Corner. We actually have BI, but there's some changes you want to make. Okay. Uh, make some changes to BI. Maybe it's just me, but it, in June, I'd like to have it all done. Even if it, it you know, there's separate <coughs> articles that get voted on, but I'd like to have it all done so we can put it behind us. We've, we've been at this for how many years? Three? Three, Three years? One. Four Three years. <laughs> yeah, more than that. One or two games. <laughs> you know, probably closer to five if we stop to look at it. We've, we've been at this for quite a long time. You've been at peace we yes, have, we have been piecemealing it. Piece and and, 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 it would, and it would be nice to get it. Now, if, 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 if your comments, are you saying comprehensive every zoning district? I think that would be nice, but that depends on right. the comprehensive plan. But we can we can get all of the business districts right. tied up. We haven't even looked at, at CC, CCS, CCN. Route 111. Put it, yeah, put it in simple terms, will you? The, the, Alfred, the, Alfred, the Alfred Road section. We haven't even looked at it. But no, Marty. Marty, it's been CCN for how many years now? You ought to know that right now. No. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> um, so I don't think we're going to find art to be much different than it is now. That's no. just a larger built, larger building size. Yep. That's the biggest thing. You had a commercial north. Yes. And that's the end. We change it every year as to how you can remember where you live. I think we're in pretty good shape if we, if we take this approach. I think we've, we've touched upon every district except SSN so far. We've, we've, and even that, we have, we have a whole... Shoreland has changed. Remember that. Yep, Shoreland show has show changed. We've got to look at... And that's uh, more of a mapping problem. Gateway uh, District. Is that state or federal? CCN. State. Don't forget, you got federal ones that are in there high watermark. So we've got, we've got the VI, which is almost up. A couple of adjustments to make. Yeah. We've got CCN and the Gateway District. And one small adjustment yeah. on Townhouse Corner, because we never decided about contract the yards to. I was, looking in the, I was looking in the meeting, in the minutes of the meeting. We didn't make that decision. We put it off. We said, Contract the yards one is allowed down there. Right. We never discussed the issue. Of, we tabled it because we ran out of time at the meeting. Okay. So we have to do it too? And we have to decide whether or not we want to allow two in the townhouse corner district. Okay. Which is a pretty straightforward. You had an outburst from the public and then you're in the discussion and moved on. That's right. I, I will just add one concern that I've heard recurring from the public on, on contract to storage yards two is that 10,000 gallons of fuel storage in that mm -hmm. district is overkill. That's what I've been hearing through all of the turmoil we've been going through. John Hughes stores 2,800 gallons and he sells it. I've spoken to some contractors who say 
anything over 500, the town of the level has 3,000 gallons. So that is a that was a concern in that district that I wanted to pass on. But as you go for it, there's no. I was told there's no need for a ten thousand uh, dollar, ten thousand gallon storage capacity. Excuse me. How many how many gallons you have, Mike? What? For waste oil or fuel oil? Any oil. Any petroleum product that's on your property, do you have? I got a three hundred gallon oil tank. Okay. Yeah. And then I have my other my waste oil tanks. But it can. Well, my question is, you said he only has a 2,000 gallon, he has a 10,000 gallon tank in the ground, in the ground. And, and each of his oil trucks are at least uh, 2,500. Yeah. And, uh, so, if, so if you turn it up, add your numbers up. That's for distribution, though, Marty. Mm -hmm. It's still a tank. It is still a tank. It's still a tank, because you can turn on and have a, you can turn on and have a contractor have a truck like that, and it's still distribution and it's still a tank. But it's a contractor storage yard. I'm not speaking for Phil Labby, but he owns, no, 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 he owns an excavating so. company. I'm just going to use it yeah. as an example. Yeah. Phil isn't going to spend the money to buy 10,000 gallons of diesel to put on his site as many trucks as he has, knowing that next week the price of diesel can drop 25 cents. Oh, so that's just, that is a, that's feedback that I've gotten in my office that Pat may not have gotten in that the board may not have gotten. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of any kind of control. Well, depends on how much milk you buy. Well, milk is not controlling, hopefully. The reason, but the reason that price fluctuates. We have, we have a separate fuel storage there, don't we? Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it could be under a different, it, okay, that shouldn't be in our contract. Well, we do because contractors do have skid tanks that do have yeah, fueling right, their, some their equipment. You know, they, they take it on site if they're really working on a big job, or else they, they fuel the trucks there at that location. Or they have trucks go to them. Right. You know, it's not the go to them, but, but the issue like is that the it's, it's not a storage yard. Remember, it's a contractor yard. It is an operation site. And it could be as small as as a two man three man operation with four you know tri axes, or it could be shovels. You know. So yeah, that level. My only point was sure. that ten thousand should be a little bit allowed for fuel. I can't yeah. even remember. Yeah. I got to ten thousand. I remember what I Well, I remember, and I've been trying to say that contractors' storage could be any contractor, not just excavators. And if you're a distribution, an oil distribution contractor, and you run a tanker, that's 10,000 gallons. That's where it came from. A tanker truck is 10,000 gallons. So you Correct. might be storing it temporarily while you're going to your next destination tomorrow. But also, you know, like a 30, you're okay, so you're saying a 306 DLT yeah. tank. Right. Okay. Yeah, that is a 10,000 That's gallons. where it came from. Yes. But so you should discuss that. Talk about that. You know, yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to bring it up, and thank you. Well, <laughs> and and transport does have those. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ten thousand gallons of wheels. And that's that's the question: is if, if it's a stationary unit as a fuel storage yard, or if it's just sitting there overnight because they don't work twenty four hours a day. It was. It was. I think originally meant to be a. Thank you, John. Because it was the three hundred six we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. So that was something to stick on the agenda to discuss. So that would be on how old it Would you like a little heads up in terms of where the comprehensive plan committee is going in the next couple of months? Yes. Yeah, okay. To Florida? <laughs> <laughs> well, shh. No, are, are we, are we not? We're not allowed out of town. You're not allowed out of town. <laughs> well, if, if, you know, if you're not careful, you can get, get a whale out of town. Our feathers, yes. Uh, we're, we're currently working on R1, R2, R3. Unless something goes horribly wrong, I would expect that we will have a set of proposed words within the next meeting or two, which means the October or November meeting. Once we have something that we as a committee are content with, it would possibly make sense for us to meet jointly with you folks so that you can look at what we are intending and then if your schedule allows, make any adjustments you might need to make. And then ideally, in a perfect world, the comp plan revisions and 
any planning board revisions could all go to town meeting in June at the same time. Just hopefully pass the comp plan piece first, and if that passes, then the planning, the land use ordinance piece will have no problem. In, in your process, Donna, are you having the abutters and the residents come in? Uh, at this stage of the game, no, because we're, we're not looking at any major, major changes. Um, mostly what we're doing is we're cleaning up the language so it's actually English. Um, and it's clear and concise. You're right. <laughs> um, and just, we're, we're tweaking it, I would say, as opposed to anything major. So I, I don't think it's going to cause any, any major problems in that respect. The one place that we will be inviting some folks in is we're rather intent on following lot lines as opposed to random straight lines through the middle of town. So where lots are currently split, but would then not be split in, in a couple of cases, that puts people in two different, two different districts. And we want to confer with those, uh, those landowners and see you know, where you want to be and why. Um, the other thing we're looking at is uh, some, a, a couple of proposed use changes and that might all, for, for larger lots. So that might also involve some discussion with those landowners. But the, 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 the basic stuff for R1, R2 particularly, is not anything major. Do okay. you think we could probably have a joint meeting in December? That would be my goal. I will keep you apprised. Maybe you should run. Yeah, maybe, but I, I, I don't know. I hate to promise sooner than postpone it, so. Postpone me. We should see. Okay. I think that gives us, actually, I think that gives us quite a bit, especially if we can get uh, that rewrite taken care of. And his report. Um, really, not much to to report since our last meeting. Uh, however, we do have um, some movement on a few uh, parcels with some uh, new projects that might be coming in. I shouldn't say projects, but some new tenants that might be coming in for a couple of, of parcels that uh, are vacant, and uh, we're working with them right now to. Uh, the process. Um, I can't really reveal that information now, but um, I'll be able to at the next meeting. Uh, in terms of, I have not received any uh, new applications, except for we do have now three more exemptions, private way exemptions that staff review we're going to be dealing with. Um, again, dealing with the issue of private uh, right ways. Um, so we're going to be resolving those, those three. Um, we have no other I have one other staff level review coming um, that we'll be doing for a business expansion. And uh, I did talk to some property to a business owner today. Um, we will probably be having an expansion uh, coming to an existing business uh, on, in, in the CCS district that will be coming to you guys. This is a sufficient size that will be coming uh, to the planning board. So, uh, we do have business activity that's occurring. We have no subdivisions on the horizon at this point, still. Uh, and no discussions we really just lot splits and, uh, and uh, family divisions. That's all we've got going right now, but uh, no large subdivisions. Uh, it's, uh, I, I want to also make something very clear that there, might, there was a little bit of confusion about. Um, I did mention at the last meeting about our our uh, age-restricted community that's coming to us. Um, perhaps community was was a, a poor choice of words because there was an assumption out in the landscape that that was a large, very huge project that's coming with a new community. It's, it's not. It's going to be about maybe six, six, seven units. That's not, a, that's not quite a community. Um, that's still in the development stage. Uh, and then technically, that will be a subdivision. But, uh, but it is basically a <coughs> But it is not, just for the audience, it is not a new community. What's the, the new steel structure going on at the lower end of Route 1? I can't place that one. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Lord Boys. That's, that's Lord Boys. Yeah. That's Lord Boys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Try it, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been looking along very well. Very nice. 
couldn't relate the map that we approved to the location. It's changed a bit since we last looked at it. Yeah. We've done a lot of filling, did, did significant cutting, did all the filling. Don't look very nice there. No. It's a lot different. Place. It's much different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A little grass, a little, a little like just there. Yeah. A lot of you know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little more. I will tell you about that. Um, we will, uh, uh, Anne will no longer be the planning board secretary. She will not be attending meetings. She has some other responsibilities she has to do. Um, the town manager will be uh, looking into alternative ways that we can have live bodies here instead of just relying on the camera and the um, Audio recording, but for the moment, that's the way we'll be doing this. We will, not, we will be just doing the live recordings and uh, having those transcribed. Um, how quickly we can get a live person here, I don't know. That all depends on, on uh, what you have for, for finances and, and finding the right person. It's, just don't get angry. You need somebody who has some experience in doing this. Mm -hmm. Ian's done a great job. She yes, has, yes, she has, yes, she has yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, Miss her. She will say that after after twelve years of doing it, she just needs a break. Um, <laughs> no, there's that. no offense to any of you. Um, she we need a break it. too. Yeah, exactly. Um, she's been doing some volunteering and what I'll be doing. I, in house, I, I really can't justify the cost of paying a town employee that we currently have the overtime to come to these meetings. So we'll be looking outside to find a lot of communities have just minute takers that'll show up two, three, four nights a month so that they can make a little extra money. And so we'll be looking for somebody like that. If anybody knows anybody, uh, more than welcome to send them to me, but I'll be discussing with the board of selectmen at the next meeting and we'll post it on the main municipal website. And hopefully we'll be able to find a local person who's interested in doing it. Um, but until then, Ian it has agreed that she'll listen to the, the recording and watch the video and be able to leave the notes from that. So you're all welcome to say goodbye to Goodbye. <laughs> Love you. Okay. Uh, I just wanted before you adjourn, I wanted to let you know you'll get another email on this, but the date that's been selected for I think you all got the email. Okay. October first. Go ahead, Rich. October first will be uh, the board and committee workshop. For those of you who've been on the board a while, the attorney will come in and just talk to us about rules of the roads. Uh, process and procedures for boards just to make sure that we don't get ourselves into any legal hot water or any trouble. It's good to have a refresher. We have new members like Jamie and several new members on other boards and committees who have never sat through this training. Rather than give you a manual and expect you to read 18 hours of material, uh, we'll have a couple hour session with Leah and uh, she'll answer all the questions that you might have. So we'll do that October 1st, 7 o'clock. If you can't make it, I'm going to make sure with her, but I'd like to videotape the session. Um, so I can get a disc so I'll put it up on the website for people to watch. It's a Wednesday? It's a Wednesday, mm -hmm. yes, sir. It's going to be at 7 p.m.? 7 p.m., right here. You approved it by the school board already? I have. Oh. I've reserved the room, Marty. Any other business? No, move to adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Yeah. Are we opposed? Nope. Oh,